Hey everyone, and welcome to FilterGrade. Creating a film look in After Effects is a fairly simple process, but one that you might not know how to do without a little bit of explanation. In this video, we'll be going step by step on how to make your footage look film-like in After Effects. Today we're mostly going to be working with color correction and color grading. And the main concept we'll be working with is separation. Using various effects, we'll be taking our boring and flat footage and making the subject stand out from the background better. So why are we using After Effects? Well, all of the basic color work can be done in Premiere Pro using Lumetri Color. And if that's all you're doing, then really, that makes the most sense. But we're going to be leveraging some of the extra power available in After Effects in order to create an even better look. Preparing the project. Start by dragging your footage into After Effects and using it to create a new composition. Now we're going to change our composition settings. Some people will tell you to simulate the widescreen anamorphic lens look by adding black bars to the top and bottom of your footage. While this technically works, it's better to just create the project in the proper resolution to begin with. Black bars in movies aren't added to the movie, they're just added by your screen because there is nothing to display there, and that's what we're going to do here. This filmic aspect ratio is often 2.4 to 1, but can also be many others like 2.35 to 1 or 2.44 to 1. The resolution comes out to around 1920 by 800 if you're editing in 1080p, and for 4K it'll be 3840 by 1600. The same thing is accomplished here as adding black bars, but your final product will actually be an appropriate widescreen resolution instead of just imitating it. Before getting started with the coloring, we have one extra step if your footage has any camera motion. Create a null object and then track the camera motion throughout the scene. With your main layer selected, click on animation, then track motion, and select your tracking point. This should be something with good contrast that stays in the shot the entire time. Then let After Effects do its motion tracking and click apply. Make sure that it's applied to the null object. We'll need this tracking data on the null object later to do some of the effects. Basic correction. Before getting into more specific tips, we need to color correct our footage. Start by dragging Lumetri Color onto your footage from the effects panel. First, open the basic correction tab. Start by adjusting the exposure, so the overall brightness of your clip is to your liking. In this case, our footage is very dark. Next is the temperature control, which can help neutralize a scene that is too strong on the blue or orange side. Tint can help neutralize footage when it's too green or magenta. You can also use the white balance selector tool to pick a white point which will automatically move the temperature and tint. Contrast can help increase or decrease the separation between light and dark. You can adjust highlights and shadows if either of those are too dark or too bright. The same goes for white and blacks. Highlights and shadows are the brightest points that still have detail, while whites and blacks cover a wider area. White and black will control what is the whitest white and the blackest black in your image. Now every clip is different, and there's no set standard for color correcting. Here's what I'm doing for my clip. I used the automatic white balance selector to get the temperature and tint. I liked what I had, so I kept it. Then I slightly bumped up the exposure, because the shot was far too dark. Now the whole shot is also fairly flat, so I bumped up the contrast to around 70. Some of the brightest points are slightly too bright for my taste, so I bumped the highlights down to minus 20. Shadows were okay, but I brought them down to around minus 10 to get a little more detail out of them. I brought up whites and down blacks by about 10 to 20 each until it looked good to me. Again, all of this is subjective, but I think the edited version of my clip does look a lot better, and more importantly, it looks much more natural and balanced, which makes it a good blank slate for doing our color work. Enhance lights. Lighting is one of the biggest factors in making a scene appear more cinematic, and chances are, your footage isn't showing off lights in all their glory. Create a new black or very dark gray solid. Make this solid larger dimensions than your scene to give the motion tracking enough room to move the layer around. Turn off the layer so you can see your footage again, and with that layer still selected, start using the pen tool to mask out the general areas where light should be spilling from your light sources.
you'll want to feather the masks a fair bit. Then turn the gray layer back on and change the masks to subtract blend in mode. Then set the entire layer to the soft light blend in mode. Now the solid and its masks will blend nicely with the scene and your light sources will appear to be casting more concentrated light. Maybe your lights were lighting up the entire room, but that doesn't mean it looks great in the edit. This is an easy way to create more focused lighting and create a better separation between light and dark. If you need to adjust the look at all, you can change the layer opacity or the mask expansion until it looks good, or increase the exposure of your overall clip if it got too dark. Now if you have camera motion, make sure you parent this solid layer to the null object with the motion tracking data in it, so that the light sources move as the camera moves. Color grading. Now that we've prepared our footage, we can go on to the kind of color grading that can also be done in Premiere Pro. You can follow these exact instructions in Premiere Pro just by using Lumetri Color, but we're going to show you how to do it in After Effects. Create an adjustment layer above everything else, then search for and apply the Lumetri Color effect to that layer. Your definition of a cinematic color grade could vary from someone else's, but we'll try to create something that a lot of people might like. Just make sure it matches the emotion. Do you want a cold look or a warm look? It will also heavily depend on what your footage looks like out of the camera and how well you did at correcting. So moving into the creative tab, the first effect here is faded film. This effect can add a contrast filter that may help achieve a cinematic look. A sharpen effect can help some details pop out if you increase it, but a cinematic look wouldn't want too much of this. Next up is saturation and vibrance. Saturation will boost the colors of everything in the shot and can easily go off the rails. Depending on what sort of color grade you're going for, you may or may not want to adjust this. A happier scene may call for increased saturation, but a dramatic one will be more muted. Vibrance also adjusts the intensity of colors, but only affects colors that are less saturated to begin with, meaning it's a more subtle effect that is less likely to blow out your shot. Now we're going to open the color wheels. You can use the color wheels to adjust the exact colors found in the shadows and the highlights. You want to be subtle here, as adjusting the color here even a little will create a drastic change. A very typical cinematic look is blue or teal shadows with orange highlights. You could also adjust the midtones, and you'll probably want to push these more in the direction of your highlights. You should then go back to your basic correction tab and make any needed adjustments to make this color grade look better. Once again, this is subjective. What looks like too much color might be just fine for someone else, and might also be appropriate for a certain movie look. My final product here may not be for everyone, but it may be perfect for the mood I'm trying to achieve. There are no strictly right or wrong answers. After all, cinematic means two very different things when comparing a romantic comedy to a gritty action movie. Now with all that being said, you can also use preset LUTs or lookup tables designed by other people. You'll still need to do your basic correction, so please do not ignore this step. Even the best LUTs in the world aren't smart enough to balance your footage if it's too dark, too bright, or too flat. Applying LUTs to footage that has terrible white balance or is just too dark won't look good. So again, get your basic correction nailed down, whether you're doing your own color grading or using a LUT. LUTs can come in several forms, and we'll be showing how to import a cube file. Create an adjustment layer and apply Lumetri color to it. Open the Creative tab, and under Look, you'll see a list of pre-installed LUTs that come with Adobe. You can start with these, but you can also import ones that you downloaded, like one of our LUT packs available in the Filter Grade store. Click on Browse, and navigate your files to find the one you're looking for. The LUT will be applied as soon as you import it, and you can control its intensity with the slider below. It may be too intense by default, or maybe it's not intense enough. For my edit here, I really like Filtergrade's free Pastry Wonderland LUT for its subtle warm tone. Alright everyone, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope that now you better understand how to create a great looking color grade for your footage. Let us know in the comments below if you have any more questions about getting a cinematic color grade in Adobe After Effects. See you in the next video! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.